Hi, Bouche here, just with a quick little vid going through some of the more specific details of Pictomancer that we've been able to pick up from the trailer. I've gone through carefully with footage, frame by frame, tried to figure out GCD speed, how much damage each hit was doing, things like that, to try to establish the relative strength of abilities, their potency per second, what rotation stuff might look like, things like that. It's worth talking about limitations and methodology before I get into the meat of it. There is obviously going to be some level of inaccuracy based on user input. I think the fact that, so in order to figure out stuff, right, if I quickly, let me just open it up on OBS. To show you how I figured stuff out, basically two bits to the methodology for like precision stuff. Down in the bottom here, you can toggle uh, Media Player Classic to show high precision, which gives, you know, Far more decibel points and then you can use control and the arrow keys to go through stuff frame by frame so you can do something like see what the timestamp is for when the button's first pressed and then play it out a little bit and do something similar at the tail end obviously there's going to be reasonably accurate but it's not going to be perfect especially given that Final Fantasy's GCD speed is not consistent because of like frame rate and stuff anyway. But with that, I feel reasonably confident saying that the GCD speed of Pictomancer in the showcase was probably 2.46, maybe 2.45, but like in that sort of ballpark. And from that, I'm happy saying like the Etherhue casts have a base GCD of 2.5 because that's fairly standard. It's It's in line with stuff. We have other complicated issues, right? So I can look at damage, but there's a few things that are gonna muddy stuff, right? Firstly, very low sample size. Like these are all the casts that I kept track of. So there's going to be variance, especially given the inherent plus minus 5% variance. You can have as much as like the lowest and the highest potential damage are 10% apart, right? So that's going to be significant. You also have stuff like direct hits and crits. Direct hits aren't too bad because assuming they haven't massively changed stuff up, they will be a flat plus 25%. So you can easily like tweak that. Crits are a bit trickier. For a baseline, I have basically kind of, we know that they are rocking what is likely to be the equivalent, like the eye level equivalent gear to the 560 gear in Endwalker, like the stuff that you get for free for your job. We know this because of the Viper stuff. Again, similar technique going frame by frame. This is just a screenshot. We can see that eye level is 690 here. We can see this accessory. I believe this is the earring. It's either this or the earring. I think it's the earring. It's 690. We get an idea of some substats and stuff, right? And these sort of substats tend to adjust with the level. So like for the equivalent for Shadowbringers, you get similar substats here right for red mage as an example with their 560 gear you end up with a gcd of 2.41 and a crit hit multiplier of 48.7 roughly 49 right given that this is 2.46 i have used as my reverse calculation 1.5 it could be like 1.49 or some something in that range for our purposes, to get a rough idea, I think 1.5 is fine. So that's what I've used to reverse calculate crits. In this, you, it's also worth noting for people that are less familiar, you can tell what is and isn't a crit based on, you have stuff like this, but it's like you can tell by the text for it. So normal hits are very thin, direct hits are slightly emboldened, crits have an exclamation mark, direct hit crits have many exclamation marks on like much bigger. You can tell visually um, whether something's crit or direct it or the like this is just data entry stuff cast times is the best i've been able to get them so we have the actual gcd that i could guess from looking at footage the assumed base gcd and then the cast time over here is the actual cast time and it's how long the actual cast bot is so as an example for ether hue the cast time seemed to be 1.43 it could be 1.45 you have about a second and this is consistent across a lot of stuff. So that's that side of stuff. Bold means crit, italics means direct hit. We also have additional complication in the under the ley lines type buff, people are theorizing that there is a rate buff to people. It's not clear what the 
what how much that would be, whether that is even a thing, and whether it applies to the Pictomancer. So the approach I've taken for this is to mark everything that is cast in the supposed damage buff that comes out with ley lines, mark that blue, and then do two separate calculations, one that doesn't change anything, one that tweaks the relevant values assuming a buff of 5%. So that's the general structure of what I've done for stuff. In this tab, we've got the actual adjustments for like baseline casts. It's worth noting I didn't bother with the, ha the hammer stuff because the hammer stuff appears to be crit direct hit, like guaranteed. So you can see here, I've got the unbuff cast for like spells that were cast in the stuff. So with our very limited data, we have the average cast with no adjustments, the average cast if you reduce this, assuming a 5% buff. And then if you set the first ether hue, like the white ether hue as a base potency of 100, you can then get proportional amounts by taking these averages and doing the math. So yeah, that gives us some idea of where stuff might be. You then have ley lines, the actual speed buff, it seems to me to, like this is roughly 2.4 when it's sped up versus like 3.25 or 3.3 or somewhere in this region. I would imagine this probably works out to be an actual value of 0 0.75, which in a tool tip would be, it reduces cast and recast times by 25%, would be the wording that they would use for that. So I'm imagining it's gonna be this, maybe is a weird figure like, 26 or 27 or something but yeah we're in that sort of ballpark one thing i will note is i saw some people saying these stack things might be heals and stuff i actually think if we look here i believe this is this is the low lines buff right the speed buff when this last stack is spent that buff disappears so i think it's a sort of uh, something like machinist and wildfire where you have a timer but you also have stacks so it's how many stacks of spells get their speed boosted. That does potentially change how we want to focus certain stuff. Because if you're in a fixed time for ley lines, you just pump spells in and it doesn't really matter. If you only get five spells covered, then you'll want to, for instance, focus more on getting these, these dark ether hues in because they have longer casts. So you're cutting off more time by having five of those reduced as opposed to, say, the white ether hue. You might do your two minute burst something like this of pop the thing, you weave these when you can because they're OGCDs and you do one, two, three, four, pallet swap one or comet or something like that. We'll have a better idea when people actually get to play with that, but I think that's the baseline of you want to primarily be spending these under ley lines. In terms of potency stuff, the main interesting thing is rotation. It seems in our ether hue rotation we don't actually want to spend the holy stacks if possible now there is an obvious concern here of our our holy hip spender this probably low rolled massively right but given the information we have this is the average potency per second for this chain where you do the one two three of the light you spend the holy pip one two three of the light you transpose into dark one two three of the dark comet holy so you're back to neutral with that. That chain, if you average it out, is 50.98977 potency per second. Now, if we assume that the holy potency low rolled, an adjustment we can make for that to get a rough alternative idea is, let's say that our likely design is that this holy has the same potency as the final ether hue in the combo. So we'll just make that value that we'll make our average, you know, account for that here and ignore this. So you get a slightly higher number. Compare that with instead doing one, two, three, get a holy pip, one, two, three. This gives you the 50 gauge we need for the transpose, which is why we're doing six of these. Transpose one, two, three, comet. And then we're back to neutral in the sense that we have no gauge. We are um, sitting on a holy pip but that's not actually a gain so this rotation it has higher than the non-adjusted one for the what i will call the standard rotation the expected standard rotation it is 
slightly higher but basically about equivalent to the one that's adjusted and then if we include the adjustment that we made for comet in this one it's ever so slightly higher so the other thing we wanted to check as well is are the buffs like this is with the five percent buff being assumed to be true because a lot of the dark casts were done under buffs if that isn't the case and there is no five percent buff on the pictomancer then the average potencies look something like this which makes it worse because there's a very clear gain over doing this shortened like ignore holy pip one but my suspicion is that it is either a very very minor dps gain to do this rotation or it is dps neutral to spend the holy pips which means in all likelihood that holy pips they'll be a bit like toxicon on sage where you don't spend them for damage aside from like weird stuff like having an insta cast before a boss disappears where a one and a half second cast wouldn't go off in time so we can maybe just sit on these indefinitely and just make sure we have some for the dark comet stuff so this might be ideal because the way to think of this right is three of the like doing one of these ether u combos like three inputs for the white ether u combo gives you 25 gauge two rounds of those gives you the 50 that wants to go to dark these gcds the holy gcds do not contribute towards that rainbow gauge so this is a higher density of dark cast spells by doing this so that's why this potentially is better damage but it's very marginal and given that what we have for holy is one sample size and possibly a fair low roll but it's hard to say definitely food for thought though the only other thing that we can maybe try to figure out is okay what are possible potencies and given that we know a rough idea of ratios this probably we're looking at potencies roughly looking at this i'm not gonna map it out and be like oh this is the new potency like tooltip stuff and this blah 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 this is mostly an exercise of can we figure out what our rotation is going to look like at various levels and based on that it's mostly what we would expect i think where we have you know level 30 you're all of all of these you're summoning as much as possible and you're bringing these into burst because they're ogcd so you're like losing a gcd or like one and a half two-ish gcds to prep these but they redeem you later and you get to redeem them under buffs it's a bit like how with white mage and blood lilies you spend a gcd not doing damage but then the blood lilies worth four and you can put that inside the buffs so similar concept here these aren't on cooldown timers in the same way these are so even though this is two minute after you do your ley lines and your burst and stuff you don't have to wait two minutes to use this again like you can prep it earlier this is the render is the thing that has the cooldown on it so these you spend them as you get them so 30 50 pretty straightforward 70 you can use it as a raid buff then at 60 this is when you get the introduction of the dark ether hue you get your transpose stuff and your dark stuff at 60 so you'll want to be given that you don't have any holy puts or anything you'll just be casting this then when you get the gauge spending it to do the dark when you flip will depend on movement and stuff and also you'll want to ideally have these for first windows right so for the ultimate like level 70 ultimates it will mostly be fairly straightforward stuff trying to reserve gauge and the motif render stuff so that when you pop this down you get to flip cast these within stuff do hammer stuff to then weave these as well but yeah you'll want your density of dark ether hue and the render ogcds and finishes like the moogle and hammer stuff yeah 80 you get the holy stuff interestingly because holy isn't a potency gain it's not necessarily optimal i guess one thing that we would want to figure out for level 80 is if you don't include comet here how does that affect stuff this average one two three four six seven nine you could see yeah skipping holies here because this is all the inputs of the stuff but without holy it's slightly higher right so again potency just i'm not gonna go into depth for that stuff now but like there's a potential hit of it's at least damage neutral it's potentially higher so that's the main thing to consider yeah aside from that that's the main thing we have an idea of the gcd speed in the trailer 
or in the showcase, we have an idea of cast times, so we know basically you can't cheat on any of the casts with Swiftcast because all of the cast times are slower than the recast times, so you won't skip anything, you'll just gain weave window. And all of them have at least a second difference between cast time and recast time so that you can single weave. Other than that, fairly fairly straightforward potency per second stuff. So yeah, that was the main thing I wanted to highlight. This is mostly nerd stuff um, that will potentially help us figure out what the rotation might look like before all the tooltip stuff come out. A little little bit of food for the theory crafters in like the balance discord. But yeah, no, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully this is interesting and I haven't just wasted like several hours of my time going through this sort of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, see you around.